Taiwan, a country I'm proud to say I'm from. In my career as a media entrepreneur, I've spoken to movers and shakers here who make global headlines. But what I'm most excited about are the up and coming forces of my generation. They're young, they're creative, they dare to defy the status quo. Follow me as I meet emerging leaders of Taiwan who lift us, who inspire us, who are changing the world, starting in Taiwan. This is Game Changers with Emily Waiwu. Hey, welcome to the very first episode of a really promising season. You heard it in the intro. In this series, I will be talking to some very cool people doing really interesting and important things in Taiwan. They're following their passion, even when things get tough, and they're making a dent in the world. When we talk about the vibrant democracy that's Taiwan and how we're connected to the world, these are the forces that we're talking about that are changing the society. You're in the arts, they're in tech, they're in music, human rights, food, politics, education. And today, we begin with sports. Our game changer today, Gina Pan, she's bringing visibility to women's basketball. And in doing so, she's giving younger girls role models to look up to and opportunities to play in team sports and all the advantages that come with. Building friendships, building confidence, building leadership skills, building resilience. Gina's trick to this, it's super simple. She's created a home for high school and college women's basketball, a website that features schedules, gameplays, articles, biographies. It's a celebration of the achievement of the athletes. She's been doing this for eight years, and I'm so excited for her to be our first game changer. Here she is, founder of Double Pump, Gina Pan. Hi, Emily. Thanks for having me. I'm so yeah. cool. I'm so happy to see you. You're super, super cool. Um, I was a girl athlete too growing up. Um, growing up in Taiwan though, it's really tough to be a girl and an athlete. Yeah. We're kind of a special breed. You grew up playing basketball. Yes. What did you play? What was your position? What was your favorite move? I am a sender and slash three-point shooter. Wow, yeah. okay. That might explain how you shoot for such high goals right now. <laughs> okay. You have 50,000 fans on Facebook now, more than 35,000 fans on Instagram um, and growing. You broadcast live games, you produce news, highlights, articles, biographies, uh, gameplays, schedules for domestic and international tournaments. And so anybody who wants to find out what is happening with our women's basketball can go and find out. Um, I hear that we have a really strong youth women's team. I and mean, reflecting back on your childhood, uh, middle school, uh, elementary school, middle school, college, you played competitively in college. Yeah. What did you think, what did you think was lacking? I think uh, there was no role models when I was playing sports. Uh, I know there are a lot of female athletes in Taiwan because they have, they are phenomenal in internationally, right? But I don't know about, I know little about their stories, about their backgrounds, about how they're growing up, how they achieve their goals, something like this. I don't know. There are so many role models that I, that I can look up to that should be celebrated. And when you were 25 years old in 2014, you founded Double Pump. Yeah. What made you have this epiphany to say, wait a second, something's totally missing and you're going to be the one to do something about it? The, the epiphany came from a really sad story. When I was in college, my teammates and I were really into basketball. So after practice, we went to see the game called WSBL. So that, that's the women's league for Super Basketball League, league which is yeah. the semi-pro league in Taiwan at the time. And, but it is the highest level of women's basketball league in Taiwan. Okay. And as I recall, that was around dinner time. So I brought some snack into the stadium. The snack was kind of the dry noodles that you need to crush it and uh, shake it oh, a, little little bit. Yeah, the, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit before. Wang Zinian. Yes, that one. Yeah. <laughs> so I brought it in the stadium. Though the WSBL was the high, highest level of women's basketball, there, there was no fans in the stadium. And there was so quiet. And the, there's no DJ, no music, nothing. All you can hear is uh, the, the sneakers rubbing on the floors, the sound of the players and the dribbling on the floor. 
so it was so quiet. I was afraid that the sound of scratch and shake would inter interrupt the games. The, wow. the players might be hurt, hurt the sound, and I feel very sad, embarrassed. Oh yeah, you don't want to distract them with, oh wow. Uh, okay. Yeah, and that, that's, mm. it was that quiet. Mm. And however, the game itself was pretty good. The skills of the players are phenomenal. So I was thinking, why, how come there's no one to see the game? Mm. There's so little coverage of the game itself. They play so hard even if, even there was no fans there. Mm. They practice every single day. They play great games, so we think, and my friends and I think, these players should be seen. Mm. We want to make a difference. So you started with a Facebook uh, group? Fan page. Fan page, okay. Yeah. What did the players think at the time? Did they think you were, like, were they, were they happy that you were coming to take their photos or? They didn't know who we are, actually. They think we are fans. And actually, we, we are fans. Mm -hmm. So they're happy that somebody finally recognized him. Mm -hmm. Finally, a call to action to make more people uh, see them play. So you started the social media side and you were covering games. Um, and in 2017, a really exciting event happened in Taipei, right? It was the Universiade, which is the Olympics of colleges and universities around the world. Everybody gathered in Taipei yeah. to cover the event. So, yes. But that actually wasn't what you expected. And you were denied a media pass. But that same year, um, there was an international tournament that happened in India that granted you a media pass. Yes. What, what impact did that have on you? That was really a turning point for us to rethink our role in Taiwan. Because like we, like I said, we started from social media and people can create any kind of Facebook fan page if you want. So maybe it, to them, we, are, we were not so serious mm. to our job. Mm -hmm. Or we might look like some students who are really interested in, in basketball. Yeah. And we didn't have media background. Yeah. We're not athletes, and I even start, I even majored in German with his, when I was in college, so we got denied. But I can, we can laugh about it now, but it was heartbreaking at that time because we covered stories of, of the university game uh, almost a year before 2017. We covered every single games. We attend training camps, but we got denied at the most important game. So maybe we could, you know, do something different to make other people think we're serious. So we, at that time, after that, we started our own company. We built a website. We cover mm -hmm. more stories from mm -hmm. various level, from junior high school, high school, university, WSBL, or even international events. So yeah, that was really a turning point for us. Mm. But looking back, I was, I was fortunate to be denied, that we can rethink our role and we can redefine ourselves. But somebody did take you seriously because that same year, yeah. um, FIBA, the International Federation for Basketball, um, had an Asia Cup in India, mm -hmm. and you did get a media pass for yes. that. We were the only media from Taiwan, and uh, and there was media from Korea and Japan, uh -huh. and that's all. All of them are from the Federation, the Basketball Federation and we are only one who paid ourselves to India to cover the stories. Wow, the only yeah, independent media outside of the Federation. Yes. Wow, what a eye-opening experience that must have been. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, looking back on all these years, what are some of the impacts, some of the changes that you've seen throughout the years since Double Pump? I mean, how are athletes different now because of you? Or the, how, how is the community different now? The players are so kind because mm. we showed up every single game from uh, small games held by schools to HBL finals played in Taipei Arena or even overseas international games. They will see us, see us there. And when we didn't show up, there were messages, messages that said, why didn't you show up? Where were you going? Is that we became friends. <laughs> mm -hmm. They know that we truly care for them and they're loved. And gradually after um, the fan base has grown and they kind of aware that they are the role models for the next generations. Mm -hmm. That people pay attention to what they do and what they what they did, what they say, and they get used to uh, 
be interviewed after the games, and they get used to that people really want to know their stories, and that they are now aware that their stories could really inspire people. And as for the fans, I would like to say they change a lot too, because back where we started, the fan, the women's basketball fans、um, wouldn't ask for much, because they knew that. There was not much they can do,、yeah. uh, so when we showed up, our strength found together. That they know that there are people who just like them, care for women's basketball. So, so for example, if now the women's game don't broadcast, they will be very furious. They will be leave messages. They will、mm-hmm. make phone calls. They have the courage、wow. to fight for more for women's basketball. So you, if you don't broadcast a game, you have the players asking, "Where are you?"、Yeah. and you have the fans asking, "Where are the games?" I can't. Yeah, I think、uh, we empower the fans, and the fans also empowers us.、Yeah. I feel like、yeah. we're fighting together. Yeah, where are the fans coming from? Are they mostly in the cities, or just all throughout Taiwan or the world, actually? Mostly in the cities in Taiwan, but there are also fans from Hong Kong, Malaysia, that. Mandarin-speaking countries. There was an event called Under 73, Three X Three Asia Cup.、Uh, it was held in Malaysia in October、mm-hmm. this、uh, year, uh, this October,、uh, 2022. Yeah, and I was there.、Uh-huh. And our players are so popular that、uh, players from other countries will make a queue to just take photos with them. And players from other other countries told us that they have seen our players on double pump. Not only do you work with From professional athletes and、uh, school athletes, you are also spreading awareness, encouraging more girls to play. Yeah.、Uh, well, let's take a break.、Uh, when we come back, I want to ask you about、um, community engagement. Hey, welcome back to the show. This is Game Changers with Emily Waiwu. This is where I sit down with really cool people in Taiwan who are doing amazing things in the world. Gina today for the past eight years. Has been raising visibility for women through basketball. We've talked about a lot of really happy things. Yeah, you know how your platform has improved、uh, once the quality of game gameplay, a fanfare,、um, the prime, the the audience for women's basketball. In addition to working with professional athletes and student athletes,、um, you're also really big on community engagement. You are running workshops, sports camps, tournaments. All year round, to girls and women of all ages, to encourage them to play sports and have fun and build friendships. Right.、Yeah. I want to talk about something that is not so happy right now. Right. There's still a lot of challenges. Yeah. Sexism.、Um, so the roadblocks ahead. I know a while back you had organized workshops for parents, trying to convince parents that one, sports is important, and two, their girls should play sports. That didn't really. Work out quite well. Yeah, for parents in Taiwan,、uh, sports is not the p- priority for their daughters. Piano, yeah, maybe, but sports not so much. So we want to spread the ideas that girls can be a better version of herself、uh, through playing sports. They can learn more, be more resilient,、uh, learn teamwork, more confident, or be the leader of the future. And We want to change a narrative of that sports are for boys,、mm. but sports are for for all. And especially, we believe that sports build girls, and and that we have to convince the parents、mm. to encourage their daughters to playing sports. That you're still running a lot of camps for younger、um, girls. Um, you also work with other organizations that train boys as well, but also, but really, just to encourage gameplay. Um, as a passion, because、um, as you said, right, is resilient. I'm、right? learning how to fail and lose a game and be a really good loser. Yeah, because I learned these great characteristics from playing basketball. So we believe that, yeah, we do learning this great char- characteristic that lasts a lifelong time. So we we want the girls to have our experience when they. Were little. I remember growing up, female athletes、mm. oh, were all very tomboy,、um, and now that's not the case, right?、Um, most girls embrace their femininity.、Mm. They look beautiful on court and off the court.、Yeah. They have ponytails. On the one hand, you think, oh, this is great because we get to be whoever we can be now, right? You don't have to, 
you don't have to conform to a certain idea that if you play sports, then you're a boy, then you're a tomboy, then, right? Is that, am I, am I mm, how, how far off am I? <laughs> Some of them are forced to wear a ponytail, to wear long hair, because this is kind of a response to, to the parents that your, your daughter playing sports, playing basketball, and basketball is a very masculine sports, right? Yeah. So when they play basketball and they won't become tomboy, they won't become homosexual. And that's some of the reason why they are forced the players to wear ponytail. The players are forced to play, to wear ponytails now. Yes, some of them. I, I'm hoping this is kind of a transition period that we're going through um, as we grow our female sports. Yeah. Uh, that makes me so sad. <laughs> <laughs> me too. What about for some other cultural shifts that still need to happen for girls and women's sports to be as popular um, as men's sports? We want to change the narrative of women's basketball is not worth watching, is not competitive, is not good enough. Mm -hmm. So we started this, we, we want to change this narrative started from our brand name, Double Pump. Oh yeah, yeah, tell me about that. Yeah, Double Pump is a basketball term. It is a difficult move. So, what, what's the move? It's, it's, you, you have to jump in the air and you, I can do this right now. So, <laughs> <laughs> when you jump and you suspend. Yeah. And, and then and you, you shoot. And then you kind of jump again. Yeah. In the air. Can you do it? No. Oh, not now, but could you do it? Mm, no, not really, but uh, many female athletes can do it. So when the commentators saw the female athlete do double pump, mm. they will say, oh, she did a boy's move. Mm. They will put it this way. But double pump is a term, it's neutral. It's not a boy's move, nor is a girl's move. It's just a difficult move. It's just a basketball term. So we take it as our brand name to connect double pump, this difficult move, to women's basketball. To let people know that female athletes can do difficult moves, they can be very competitive, they can be skillful, so it's worth watching. I love that. Yeah. Wow. So what's the bigger vision for a Double Pump, the media site? How big does it need to be? We cover stories um, in the past few years, we cover stories on most of elite athletes. Okay. But for now, we want to uh, provide more for women like mm -hmm. ourselves, who is not an athlete, but who really like playing sports, playing basketball. And in the future, we want to cover stories of all kinds of sports for female athletes, you know, stronger together, right? So it's like a, like an ESPN for, for women's sports. Yeah. Um, does that exist in the world right now? Is yeah. ESPNW or Together, which run country? by Sue Bird, the basketball legend, and Megan Rapinoe. Um, we don't have a professional women's basketball league still. What yeah. leagues do we have? We have a professional league for soccer, okay. softball, and semi-professional league for volleyball. And archery. Archery. Yeah. We're quite good at archery. Yeah. We're in the Olympics, we do really well. And weightlifting? Yes. Archery, badminton. That tennis can... also. Tennis. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We're so good at tennis. Yeah. Um, well, I hope that I think that you know one day we don't have to be naming off the sports that we are good at and that we have so many athletes that are shining uh, right. in the world. Yes, and I'm sure. so happy to see what you're doing for women's sports here. I really love that sports that can bring us together. So I think we have a lot of games happening this year, right? Um, our girls' basketball teams are competing in a lot of places in the world. This year, 2023, it is an awesome year for women's basketball. At youth level, we have under 19 World Cup in Hungary in July. And in August, we have under 18383 World Cup in Hungary. As for senior international, uh, senior national teams, we have Asian games in China and Asia Cup, and also university games in, in China. And we will share this information on our website to people for people to follow up and hopefully we could be there on site. China, China, Spain, and Hungary. Yes. All right, so if you're in those places, please come to the games and root on our teams. Well, thank you so much today uh, for being here, Gina. I, I really love the work that you do. Um, I actually stumbled onto your work um, 
I think at some point I was coming back and forth between Taiwan. I was living in Hong Kong, and there was a group of us who were playing basketball in Hong Kong. They were so good, and so I was just hungry for this. Where's that community in Taiwan? So I think I just did a Google search, and <laughs> you guys came up.、Yeah. And it was only until later I realized like how hard it's been for you,、um, but it's such a game-changing thing you're doing. So I thank you so much for being our first guest. You're welcome. Now, before you go,、um, there's a question I want to ask you. Okay.、Um, which is, you know, a lot of things、um, we we do now. I think it's because of people that came before us. We're always building on the work of others, but there's other things that you yourself had to fight for. So, given you know double palm or basketball or girls basketball, how much were you given? You know, if your accomplishments so far, how much was given to you versus how much did you have to fight for? Honestly, I think we have to fight for everything because we started with no resources at all and. But but we're really grateful for people who help us along the way. Without their encouragement, we couldn't stick to it for eight years. But honestly, yeah, there was a lot we have to fight for: fight for acceptance, fight for equality for women, fight for especially fight for the future that no one knows what 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 it'd be like. But you know, I, I really enjoyed every minute of it. I mean, it, it definitely looks like you're enjoying it. I've seen you at these tournaments.、Yeah. Um, I've seen I've seen you in your photos and hear about how your friends talk about all the projects. <laughs> yeah, and you do seem like you love what you do,、um, even if how hard it is changing culture, battling sexism, and trying to build up a whole industry of、um, basketball, women's basketball. Best of luck in the future. Thank you.、Um, and I hope that you know we can all do our part and try to make women more visible,、um, and to make sports a bit more a part of our lives. Right? We don't、sure. have to take it prof- professionally. Yeah. Well, I think that's it for today. Thank you for staying with us for the very first episode of Game Changers with Emily Y. Wu. And this is our game changer today. If you're also a game changer in your country, or if you're also helping. To make women more visible or working in basketball, please get in touch with Gina. Yeah, sure. Come to me. <laughs> and as for me, my name is Emily Waiwu, and you can find me on all social medias. Please do stick around for more interviews with really cool people doing awesome things from Taiwan. We're changing the world. You're watching Taiwan Plus. Follow and subscribe, and I will see you next time. <laughs>